Hey everybody, Matt Donner, Chief Academic Officer here at Pyramind. Uh, today I'm going to introduce you to a super cool new tool. I've been having fun with this from our good friends at K-Devices. Uh, thanks for the hookup, Alessio. Appreciate it. Uh, this is our good friend, Hearse. And as you can see here, this is its title. It's got this cool little Ableton-like logo here. It is a Max for Live device, so you will need Max for Live in order to mess with this. Um, but you should get that and you should make this happen because Hearse is really powerful. I mean, the possibilities are pretty huge with this one tool. Um, in short, it does, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve different things in one. Um, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend some time going through this and it may take me a couple of videos to pour through it all. Uh, and I, would, I do want to kind of spend a little time messing with things and letting you hear the differences kind of before and after uh, because there are, there are a lot of little details here and um, a lot of really fun opportunities. And then, of course, when you take these 9, 11, 10, 12 things that it does and add them or multiply them to each other, I mean, the possibilities become really, really huge. Uh, and so what I'm going to do today is just kind of walk you through what it is. And the first thing I'm going to do is introduce you to our sample uh, this is some random vocal sample I grab off, grabbed off of um, the Ableton Suite package. Um, I've warped it a little bit. I'll turn off warping. You can hear what it sounds like original. This is a pre-baked vocal, so it has delay built into it. It may even have warping built into it. Um, but it's okay because this really just shows how Hearst can take any piece of audio and use uh, can be used to create all kinds of new stuff. So here is our sample on its own. Billy Love can you keep it down? You okay, so as you can hear, there's a little uh, eighth note pickup here at the end, but it starts here with the feel, feel in love. Can you feel it now? Um, strike that. So as you can see, there's a little pickup here, and then the downbeat of the one comes in here. And this is very much a one, da, 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 very straight up and down vocal. I warped it a little bit to give it some swing. Uh, to give it a little vibe at my 85 BPM tempo. And what we're going to end up with after it's warped is, and let me turn the loop back on, is this. Feeling love, can you keep it down? You're feeling love, can you keep it down? So as you can hear, uh, some of the warping in here made those delays go from uh, eighths to sixteenths. Uh, they sound a little bubbly. They sound a little uh, warped and stretched, but that's okay. That's kind of fun, and I'm going to work with that. And so now I'm going to kick over to Hearse. I mean, that's just to give you an idea of what we're working with today. Uh, Hearse, you have to think of in kind of one, two, three, four, five sections. And starting on the left here, um, right underneath the title, this is a graphic where it's basically showing you the buffer of what's going on. Uh, so right now, none of the effects are really on. Uh, so I'm just going to hit play and you can see what I mean. What happens is this fills up live and it's tied to the, to the transport. So as soon as you hit play, her starts filling the buffer with the audio. And so when you go to use this, you might find that you need one, two, four bars, um, kind of time before you get going so the hearse can fill up. Uh, and to give you an idea of this length two right here, this is comes in one, two, or four. This is how many bars is that buffer. Uh, so I've gone with two bars length here and just gonna hit play, you can see. Feeling love, can you keep it down? You're feeling love, can you keep it down? Okay, so it took one play to fill and it took another play, it pretty much stabilized. Uh, and as soon as, as soon as I hit stop, the buffer empties. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. This length is kind of important. If you don't want to mess with this, you can always lock it down. Now, below it, you have some rhythmic um, options. Right now, I'm just staying in straight quarter notes. So it's basically straight, triplets, dotted eighths, in other words, swing. And you have two main variances, uh, the main resolution and then the variable resolution. This is, uh, all of this first section is fully tied to the second section which I'll explain in a second. But for right now, just know that you have the slider. You can go back and forth between these two values, whether you're talking about straight, triplets, or dotted. And then, of course, you can put in your swing percentage. Uh, behaves very much like the swing in Groove Pool here. So this second section is its first bit of power. This is a gate slicer. 
And if you're familiar with gate slicers, you're familiar with Rex files, uh, you kind of know what this 45 degree looks like. And if you're not familiar, what this is basically saying is um, as time goes forward in the bottom row in 16th steps, so these are all, uh, each of these blocks horizontally represents one of 16 steps. And vertically, it refers to the slice of audio. So as you can see, if I hit play, you'll see it go beep, 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 up, 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 uh, sort of in time, up the chain here in 16th notes. Can you keep it down? Now, I only have 16 steps, so you can see it goes through twice. Uh, you can go no higher than 16, but you can go all the way down to two steps. So you get a binary action here. Um, I would think that fours, eights, and 16s would be appropriate figures. Um, it would be cool if they could go out to 32s, but I imagine graphically it might not fit in this territory. So we, are, we have 16. So over here, you have settings for these guys. And the first of which is this guy. If you click on this, it sets it to default. And then the one below it is fun. This is called random. And so every time you click it, you get a different matrix or a different grid. And every time you click it and you get a different grid, it literally plays a different slice. So this very first 16th note, instead of playing this first syllable here, it actually plays this syllable from way down here in the timeline. So if I'm looking at this one, I'm looking at something uh, for a 12 16th notes later. So it's actually going to play the 12th or really the 13th 16th note instead of playing the first one. So this will just give you an idea of what it's doing right in and out the gate with just the gate slicer. Okay, so as you heard the first time through, it got a little funky. There were some silences. Um, and then once the buffer filled up, it behaved a little more consistently where every single square made a sound. You have a crossfader here and you have an amount of milliseconds or crossfader, you can go up to one to 20. Uh, so if you don't like the clickiness of it, you're not into the uh, sort of glitch nature of it, you can always add some crossfade here. Um, so one of the things you can do is just keep hitting random. And now it's full. So as you can see, I'm literally on the fly switching between regular, random, regular, random, regular, random. Um, I'll show you a little bit later some other ways that you can uh, go back and forth between various settings. But this is one way to create some interesting uh, glitch effect. And then, of course, if you turn on a resample and just simply sample it, uh, you can do this for 20 minutes, capture it all, and then take the best parts and arrange them as audio later. Um, you have this guy down at the bottom, which is something called freeze, which you might expect if I just go back to regular and hit play, let the buffer fill. And when I hit freeze, you'll see wherever I am in the timeline, it'll just repeat that slice of audio until I unfreeze it. And then it'll jump forward in time. Feeling love. Can you keep it down? Now the buffer's full. You feeling love. Can you keep it down? Okay, as you can see, there's a lot of fun to be had there as well. So between the randomizer, the freeze, going back and forth to regular, and of course, just drawing in your favorite curve, you can just click and hold, and there you go, and now you've got a, a different curve. So once you come up with a pattern that you really like, you can just keep it and then you're in business. Uh, my favorite is this guy. It kind of looks like a slippery road or maybe something weaving and wobbling. They call this the drunk walk. Yeah, drunk walk because you're drunk and it's going to literally like a drunkard say random things. It's going to jump slice to slice to slice totally randomly. So I'll just hit play and then I'll turn on drunk walk. Feeling love. Can you keep it down? 
and then the buffer is full. You feel so what's really cool about Drunk Walk is that every single play is completely unique. When you turn on the random without Drunk Walk, it's going to do this pattern. Now, if you have to click the random again, okay, you make a different pattern and then you make a different pattern. And so you can create some kind of uniqueness by varying the patterns randomly, but there's really no guarantee that you're going to get a good pattern or a bad pattern. So one of the cool things about leaving it full and then just turning on drink, drunk walk is again, you can just resample all day long, find the parts that you like the best. Um, odds are they'll just give you really cool stuff to begin with. And then you can just pick and choose. Okay. So, here we have the 16th note and the 32nd note. Now you could change these. I can make this quarter notes and then eighth notes. And so then what happens is I'll turn on drunk walk and we'll let it go. It's kind of a regular plus drunk walk. We're still in 16 steps. I'm not really going to do any swing. I've got two bars length. I'll lock that down. We'll keep it straight, uh, straight resolution. And now I can go vary between these two settings and give it a second. Now let me unlock the buffer. Yes. So let the buffer fill. That's one thing to keep in mind. If you lock the buffer, um, you may want to only do this after or during playback so that the buffer stays full because once it empties and then you lock it, you basically lock it empty. So I'll leave it unlocked. I'll uh, hit play and then we'll do this again. It may take a little bit longer to get something cool this way, but one of the things you might have noticed is I was changing these on the fly and it was reacting on the fly. And then at the end, I left it in the middle, which means Hearst is going to randomly choose between going in 16th note slices and 8th note slices. And as you can hear, the patterns that are created are pretty unique. So um, I thought that was pretty cool. So again, this is the Gator Slicer. And for now, I'm just going to leave it at 16th notes. And then we move on to this whole other thing. Very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool, and until I came here for the first time, I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since since coming to Pyramide, I, I've discovered electronic music, and you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me, and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail, we, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like, the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really help me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.